Greetings to all the attendants of Korea Blockchain Week 2020. So great to see you. We wish that we could have seen you in person, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we could only see you through this video. My name is Tal Cole. I'm the technical co-founder of Orbs, orbs.com. Orbs is a public and permissionless blockchain based on proof of stake that is working very closely with Ethereum on creating some very, very interesting synergies. Today, I want to talk to you about using cross chains for improving Ethereum DeFi strategies. What you will take away from this talk is how we can improve DeFi but using, by using other chains that are not Ethereum and can work on parallel side by side to Ethereum to create some very interesting combinations. Ethereum is still the king of DeFi. There is no argument that most of the action happens there. Other blockchains find it very difficult to rival Ethereum because if you look at metrics such as TVL, total value locked, or liquidity, we could see that most of the liquidity in the DeFi space is currently on Ethereum and it's not going away. And this is quite interesting. Why is that? Ethereum, if you think about it, has some very serious disadvantages for a platform such as DeFi. For example, very low transaction throughput. It is well known that Ethereum is not a very fast blockchain. It's not very scalable. Okay, transactions are slow, a couple of dozens of transactions per second, that's it. Maybe in Ethereum 2.0, uh, we're going to have better speed, but currently the speed is, is pretty slow. And another issue is that Ethereum is very expensive. If you ever try to pay fees on Ethereum, you know that gas, gas prices skyrocket and a single transaction can cost over a few, uh, few dollars even. And this is pretty insane. So even with these disadvantages, why is Ethereum the king of, block, uh, of DeFi? And the reason for that is mostly about composability. Composability is the ability for contracts on Ethereum to talk to each other. We can actually have a contract such as a liquidity, pro uh, a liquidity pool, uh, talking to a lending platform, talking to a yield farm. And this is the magic of Ethereum, that everything is running together and all the projects can actually communicate, the liquidity can be shared and so forth. This is actually the reason for that is that Ethereum is not sharded. If you look at most of the modern blockchains out there that came after Ethereum, you can see that most of the secret for their scalability and speed uh, is the fact that they're sharded. What do shard mean? Shards mean that different parts of the blockchain run separately, independently from each other. And this is how they can work very, very fast. And Ethereum 1.0 doesn't have that. So this seems like a disadvantage in speed, but it's actually a very huge advantage for DeFi because less sharding improves uh, composability. It lets everything runs together, everything is shared, every contract can talk to every other contract. So this is the secret behind Ethereum. Ethereum also has a very, very strong community. And as we know, a strong community is exactly what you need for DeFi because, you know, the DeFi is where the liquidity is and where the users are, and the users are on Ethereum. We do see many other blockchains out there trying to, you know, jump on the DeFi bandwagon. Why? Because everybody sees opportunity in DeFi. So let's go through some of the recent examples. For example, Binance Smart Chain is a very interesting blockchain. It's actually a fork of Ethereum um, running on kind of a more permission setting uh, proof of authority, uh, I would say. And this gives it a lot of speed. Um, and what do, what do Binance is trying to achieve with this? They're trying to replicate, replicate and replace Ethereum and try to create a new rivaling ecosystem and move the DeFi users over there. Another good example is Serum. Serum uh, backed by some big exchanges like uh, FTX, and this is running on the Solana blockchain. Uh, the issue there is mostly that all the smart contracts are written in a different language. So it's very difficult to port all of the uh, contracts and uh, systems to run over there. Another interesting example is NEO uh, that has recently uh, launched Flamingo, which is a DEX, uh, kind of similar to Uniswap, uh, I would say, uh, feature-wise, uh, but running on NEO. Uh, and EOS and Tezos, of course, also have their own DeFi projects that are mostly trying to replicate projects that we see on Ethereum. Uh, so this is what most of the blockchains out there are trying to do. But instead, I want to show you a different direction, that instead of trying to replace Ethereum, 
and take users away from Ethereum, we could actually leverage uh, with a different blockchain the Ethereum ecosystem and make Ethereum uh, better and leverage the power that we have in the current ecosystem there. Uh, so if you're familiar with DeFi on Ethereum, you probably have seen this screen. Uh, this is, of course, Yearn Finance. Uh, Yearn is, a, is an amazing DeFi product uh, that really understands DeFi and exposed many users on Ethereum to DeFi. Um, so let's deep, uh, jump, jump deeper into Yearn just to see what it's all about. I think the big magic behind Yearn is the fact that the guys behind it understood that DeFi is very difficult. And not only it's difficult to understand and participate in, it's also very difficult to do manually. Uh, think about an ICO uh, two, three years ago. Anyone could participate in an ICO by themselves. But today, if you want to make the most out of DeFi, uh, you have to communicate with many different contracts. You have to do many different operations. And these operations are not simple. You have to be kind of an expert. And Yearn goes around and solves that. Um, another good thing that Yearn does is Yearn understands that the best strategies are achieved with automation. What is automation? Automation means that you can take actions that you could do only very slowly with a human person uh, or data that is very difficult to analyze uh, as a person, and you could run all of this data automatically in a contract uh, and then get better yield, uh, better profits for the people participating in it. So let's take uh, one of the cool examples of Yearn, and this is one of the Vault products. So what is a Vault? Uh, a Yearn Vault is basically a smart contract written in Solidity, running on Ethereum, um, that users can uh, deposit funds or different assets into it. And this Vault pretty much does all of the uh, strategy of investing and using these funds to create yield uh, automatically for the users. Uh, so let's, one of the most popular vault for Yearn is the YCRV vault. Uh, and this is using uh, Curve Finance. We talked about composability, everything is connected to each other. Uh, so Curve Finance is, is an AMM, an automatic market maker, uh, or a DEX, uh, that is focused around uh, assets that are pegged to each other. For example, USDT and DAI, or um, uh, WBTC and REN, for example. Uh, so this vault uses uh, USDT, DAI, USDC, uh, dollar-based uh, assets. Um, so users basically uh, deposit the assets into the uh, Curve uh, liquidity pool, and in return, they get um, tokens, uh, YCRV tokens, and these are liquidity provider tokens. They basically uh, represent the fact that you have some shares in a Curve pool. So you take these tokens and you deposit them in the Yearn vault, in the Yearn Ethereum contract. And the Yearn Ethereum contract is actually very simple. Uh, so what does it do? If you go over the Solidity code and you see, you can see that the strategy is fairly simple. All of the tokens that people deposit are basically uh, uh, pretty much staked uh, in the Curve gauge. Uh, the Curve gauge is a smart contract written by Curve uh, that basically lets you uh, lock your Curve liquidity provider tokens and earn CRV tokens in return, the Curve uh, governance token. Um, so you earn these, and every hour or so, the contract takes the new Curve tokens that uh, grew that, and harvests them. Uh, it takes them out of the gauge, claims them, sells them, uh, and transforms them into uh, uh, Ether and then DAI. And using this DAI, the contract buys, actually, uh, more shares in the YCRV vault, takes these new liquidity provider tokens and stakes them back in the gauge. So it's kind of like in a, running in a circle uh, that is current uh, all the time compounding um, the value that is inside the vault. And this is done automatically for the users and the yields using this approach are actually very good because we take all the profits and we always liquidate them and compound them to gain uh, interest, uh, compound interest over what we put in. Uh, and this is pretty cool. The big issue with this approach is actually that there is a lot of room for improvement. Uh, if you see the strategy, the strategy is very simple. Um, so, so why does it have to be that simple? It has to be that simple because it's based on an Ethereum contract and Ethereum is written in Solidity. So one of the biggest issues with Solidity contracts is that the compute power is very much limited. If you want to analyze data for your strategy, uh, you have to do it with very little gas uh, because Ethereum has a very serious gas limit. Uh, so if you want to do computations, these computations have to be very, very simple. Another big issue is the limited storage. 
Let's say that this strategy needed to store data, for example, historic data, to do uh, analysis and then make decisions. This is impossible with an Ethereum contract. If you want a database, you can't run it on Ethereum because storage on Ethereum is very, very, very expensive. You're going to have to pay tons of gas in order just to store very, very few variables. Another big issue is that Ethereum is limited by the EVM API. EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, the EVM basically um, runs the Solidity contracts and it doesn't expose a lot of methods, a lot of API calls that contracts can make. So contracts are very limited with what they can do. For example, let's say that a contract wanted to read something from the real world. Uh, this is impossible to do. Let's say that a contract wanted to look at past transactions of somebody. That is also impossible to do. So these things uh, are very limited. Uh, you, you can't access whatever you want to do. Um, another big issue with the urine vaults is that they rely on bots. Um, in Ethereum contracts, everything is driven by transactions. So we need to have somebody external to the, uh, to the contract running and executing these transactions to make the strategy work. And in the urine vaults, these are bots uh, that are running by, um, uh, running by the urine team. And this is a fairly centralized process. So if you want to trust Yearn to do that, you have to trust that they will run these centralized bots for you. And I'm pretty sure that you won't be able to find the source code for these bots, even if you wanted to run it yourself. Uh, and this is, of course, also open to manipulation uh, by the Yearn team. Now, I'm not saying that Yearn is manipulating anything. They're a great team. But in blockchain, we're kind of used to having things decentralized. We're, gonna, we're used to having proofs that people can't manipulate the actions of what they're doing. And with this approach, because the bots are centralized, we can't do that. Uh, we have to trust the Yearn team. Um, of course, we could have had a better solution that does not require trust, and we could have a completely trustless strategy. So how can you achieve that? You could achieve that with something called a smart vault. And a smart vault relies on a different blockchain to really improve the, the vault strategy and make the strategy much, much smarter. So instead of relying only on Ethereum code written in Solidity, we also rely on a vault code written on a different blockchain. In this example, I used Orbs. Now, Orbs uh, is a parallel blockchain to Ethereum. It's running independently. It has its own uh, smart contract language, and it's actually very, very flexible. It can do many more actions than Ethereum, uh, and it's actually much, much cheaper. So you can run very deep and complicated calculations uh, on Orbs uh, for a fraction of the cost. Also, storage on Orbs is very cheap. So pretty much all of the limitations that we had uh, in the previous slide are removed. Also, uh, what, what we could do is have um, the contract running on Orbs validators behave like the bots uh, from Yearn. And these validators are decentralized, uh, and we have an incentive layer that kind of removes trust from the equation, and you can be sure that the validators do what they're supposed to, and you don't have to trust any centralized aspect of the strategy. So how would this architecture work together? So just like before, you would have a vault running on Ethereum and users depositing assets on Ethereum. Why? Because all the liquidity is on Ethereum. We, we want to keep it there. Uh, we want to take. We want to make uh, the most out of what Ethereum has to offer, and uh, we want to make the most out of the liquidity that we have on Ethereum and all the assets and beautiful projects, uh, DeFi projects we have. Uh, we want to take advantage of the composability. Um, so the contract on on the different blockchain on Orbs. Uh, can analyze and read all the complex Ethereum state. Now, this is something that you can't do directly from an Ethereum contract because it's just too limited. But a different blockchain like Orbs that is seamlessly integrated with cross-chain operations to Ethereum can analyze all the data externally. Uh, then, um, all of this uh, calculations can be injected back into the Ethereum vault using a transaction. And this is possible because cross-chain actions on Orbs actually let you communicate back uh, data back into the Ethereum contract. And then the Ethereum Vault strategy is actually implemented as a set of actions. And these actions can be very diverse and we can have much stronger strategies. For example, think about a strategy that borrows money. Uh, let's say that you want to switch in the strategy between different positions. Not all positions require the same tokens, and selling tokens and swapping them can be very expensive. So one of the things we could do, we could do, we could use and rely on lending and integrate the lending platform such as Aave or Compound. 
Now, trying to do this from within an Ethereum contract is almost impossible. Why? Because it's very dangerous. Think about liquidation events. What happened if the Ether price changes? And then you have to change your position in order to prevent yourself from being liquidated. Now, a vault on Ethereum cannot do that automatically very well. It can do very naive calculations only. But a, but a vault with strategies running on a different blockchain can actually make these decisions kind of like a person does, uh, just much more efficiently uh, and much more uh, quickly and frequently and generate much higher yields. Uh, so this is how I see the future for uh, strategies running on DeFi on Ethereum. Uh, so this is the time that we have for today. Thank you very much. Now, if you want to check all of this information out, uh, we've just recently, a few weeks ago, launched a grant program on Orbs uh, for DeFi projects. So if you want to experiment with Orbs and do cool DeFi things, uh, either on Ethereum uh, or on other places, uh, go to orbs.com and check it out. Thank you very much.